Hello, I'm Joseph, and today I want to talk about dev containers in the JetBrains editors. This is um, something I was really hopeful for, but in its current implementation, I don't think it's something I can really use in more advanced cases. I think for a very simple setup, it'll work just fine. But there's a couple nuanced things that's really annoying. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is that it will go ahead and uh, let me bring this over here. Yeah. So if you go ahead and launch your dev container, so I go, I'm going to go ahead and mount it real quick. Uh, and you go ahead and close it. You don't continue to open it with the, the additional editor that will pop up, which I'll talk in a little bit. It will delete all the entire container. So if you have any, anything that you're trying to migrate into a dev container, like you already had your database set up, you have some test data in there and stuff like that. You pull it over and you're like, okay, this is taking all, I'm cancel this or close it or whatever. It deletes, it downs the services. Down versus uh, stop is very different. Stop just stops those services. It keeps those volumes uh, in the your, your disk. Downing it will delete them. And so it just downs it. And this was fixed recently um, when you close the editor. So it used to be when you close the editor, it would also down those services. So it would delete. And I, I lost a bunch of test data that I was working with and I had to re-enter it, which is frustrating. This is a bit more problematic. So like I have some databases that sometimes take like 20 minutes to import. I don't want to import 20 minutes every single time I want to boot up something like in a dev container. So I always stop. And uh, yeah, it just, it didn't matter if you had the specific stop composed for the shutdown action. It didn't matter. It didn't respect it. And here it's not respecting it either if I go ahead and close it, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue. This will now open up a brand new window. You cannot close the other window. So now I have, well, it's gonna boot up in a little bit, but I'm going to have two editors now that I need to work in between. I'm not happy with that. And it gets worse when you have multiple dev containers, because that's not something this currently supports. It only supports one dev container, unlike Visual Studio Code. Another major issue I've run into is that it has a little bit of like information of limitations for like packages it needs. It's, it should be the packages it needs for the service it connects to that it installs itself into. So it, it's installing the JetBrains IDE inside the actual server you specify in your dev container. I fully understand that you need certain libraries for that to work. It will install those libraries automatically, but anything that is running Alpine will not work. It cannot install on it. It gets worse because it's not just the service that it's attaching to, it's any service. So if I go back to this uh, Docker desktop thing, actually, I can just go here and show you. No, I'm trying to see which is faster to get to, but um, there is a specific one here, gRPC UI. Now gRPC UI will launch perfectly fine as Docker Compose up. It will launch perfectly fine in Visual Studio Code with its dev container support. It will not launch fine in this editor. And the reason why is because it's not just the primary service that can't be Alpine, it's any service you're going to attach. Um, so in my gRPC, I'm running, you guessed it, Alpine. So I need to switch this out, switch uh, some of the pack command stuff. It's not a big deal, but it's just like an annoyance factor. For this one, for other like larger Docker files, maybe a, a, like a, a showstopper, like you just probably don't want to do that because there could be more specific to Alpine that you have that you're configuring for that distribution. So that's that. So now you have like the multiple windows. You can't close either one of them or it's not going to run into dev container anymore. You can try to use gateway. So gateway is another type of editor. It's supposed to be a remote IDE uh, and is very well tuned for this specific scenario, but it doesn't support Golang or PHP storm. It's basically whatever extensions can be installed in its idea editor. That's for like Java, Kotlin, that type of stuff. It will work with the gateway, but things like Golang that requires its own IDE, it's not going to work in that scenario. So it's not uh, like a perfect solution. And this is a, a half solution. The other thing I have to say is their current implementation on to clone or to mount. Uh, cancel. So you have an option to clone or to mount. The clone it will force <clears throat> it will force you to use GitHub.com. There is no support for any other services at this time. On top of that, it requires an SSH key to be set up. 
However, it does not respect your SSH configuration file that you have set. So if you have multiple SSH keys for different domains, like one for GitHub, one for GitLab, that type of stuff, it does not work. It will not read from your SSH configuration. It will not be able to pull the SSH key correctly. And so you, and so you cannot use clone unless you set up your root SSH key with github.com. Uh, and for me, that was a showstopper because I used my root as like another SSH key for like a, some other project by accident or whatever. And I had to go find which one that is to try and delete it or just re it was just like a, a nightmare on my part. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to bother with clone. So I'm going to do mount. And when you mount it, it says, hey, by the way, if you're on Mac, uh, you're going to have performance issues. And in their documentation, it says Windows is currently not supported. It's not Windows containers. It's just Windows in general. So do keep that in mind. It's Mac and Linux currently only. I understand. The, I mean, it's in beta, so fine. Okay. But the, the SSH key, um, it's not, it's, it's not very helpful uh, because it, you know, if you're actually someone that wants to use this for more than just some basic stuff, the, uh, the mount thing I had talked about already, it just takes this current one and runs it. Um, if you close that, it will delete it. Like I already said, but it's a big, but it does not support multiple dev containers for a single repository using the same Docker file. This is something you can do in Visual Studio Code. Albeit it's not intuitive, you have to open up the root window, run the dev container for the first one that links to the other one, open a new window, reopen that primary window, and then reopen the dev container with the second dev container. And it will use the exact same Docker Compose. It will leverage the same exact Docker services. Here, it does not do that. What will happen is if you try to launch, say, like the back end, and then you try to launch the front end, the front end will trash the back end, and then it can't even launch the front end because other the ports that the back end was using is like somehow still being used in some way, and it can't it can't even open the editor. So you can't have multiple dev containers, and you could be like, well, this install both of them into a single one. Yeah, that's fine, but there are scenarios where I don't want to be searching for something and have like, if you're using like a mono repo, have all of your code come up from all the different projects. Like if I'm working in Go, what I'll do is I'll click on like my web app and then mark as excluded because the web app is the front end part of it. I don't need any Nux stuff in my Golang when I'm trying to search for stuff. And this makes things more complicated, specifically when they're sharing very similar names between the code bases. Yeah, I can I can filter by Go and stuff like that, or I can you know specifically click on it and then search specifically in that folder, but it's just not the ideal thing. And again, Visual Studio Code already supports multiple dev containers with the same Docker Compose and not being able, and, and shares them in between each other. So, yeah, it's not in the greatest state. It, the fact that you have multiple editors open that you cannot close is also not in a greatest state. It's just not like the what, what I would say, like it's in a ready thing. And it, to say like this is in beta, I think this is more like an alpha stage. And it's not because of the bugs per se. It's just that the current implementation really isn't yielding to what I think a developer would want to leverage. And at that point, um, the like the only editor in JetBrains that I will use almost always over any other editor is PHP Storm. And that's because PHP Storm's, um, I don't want to say IntelliSense because that's like Visual Studio specific, but its tool set is so tuned to PHP that there's nothing in Visual Studio code. There's nothing in NIM or uh, NeoVim or Vimland. There's no other editor that gets close to the integration you need to be really productive in PHP. And that's being with the database support, um, doing the file uploads, working on really old classic systems that probably don't even use GitHub or some, some type of repository system at all. Literally just go to SFTP, work on the files there and upload it to production, that type of stuff. I love all that. And to see dev containers in there for that, also really awesome because if another developer is working on it, I can give them my dev container and then we can work off fairly similar thing. We don't have to recreate the wheel and then we'll have to sit down, have a little meeting so I can walk them through how to set up the Docker Compose. It's just click the little box here, install Docker desktop and click the little box here. That's it. That would be cool. So I, I'm really hopeful for this, but in its current implementation, like I said, it's not usable for me. Uh, there's too many niche edge cases that I would rather just use Visual Studio Code for or GitHub Code Spaces. Yeah. So uh, it needs some more time to bake, to cook, to, to whatever. 
if you guys have any corrections or maybe any comments or anything else you want to leave about this, please let me know. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this feature, but I, I think it just needs some more work, to be honest. Um, to say it's in beta uh, is a, a little bit of a rough statement because it needs more features. And usually when it's beta, it's like features are, you're stopping your features, you're just focusing on bug fixes. And this is not really like a bug fix scenario. It's, it's just not as feature rich as Visual Studio Code. 